The history of cinema is full of strange coincidences, elements and concepts that sometimes repeat over time, intentionally or unintentionally. But what could be perceived as a mere coincidence could be an error in our own matrix. The more we delve into the stories of this reality, the more we realize that it is quite strange, sometimes stranger than fiction. What if I told you that years before The Matrix premiered in theaters, there was a television show about a hitman who was trapped in a nightmare, in a war between angels and demons for the salvation of humans. An uncanny description of one of the many simulations of The Matrix. Oh yeah, and the title of the show was Matrix. Welcome to Matrix Explained. the desert of the real. Before we begin today's video, we would like to announce our giveaway for the Matrix Movies Complete Collection on Blu-ray, which includes The Matrix, Matrix Reloaded, Matrix Revolutions, and The Animatrix. All you have to do to participate is subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video, and tell us in the comment section below which pill would you choose, the red or the blue, and why. The winner will be announced on September 15th. Good luck! and enjoy today's video. The television show Matrix premiered in 1993 on the USA Network. The synopsis reads as follows. Steven Matrix is one of the underworld's foremost hitmen until his luck runs out and someone puts a contract out on him. Shot in the forehead by a .22 pistol, Matrix dies and finds himself in the city in between, where he is shown the faces of all the men and women he's murdered and a sea of fire. He's informed that he will be given a second chance. He must earn a reprieve from hell by helping others. He then wakes up in the hospital after an apparent near-death experience. In each episode, Matrix meets a new guide from the world beyond and is given a new assignment, much in the manner of an unwilling guardian angel. Usually his guides give him little or no useful information about the job to come and his methods of handling each case are sometimes as brutal as the rules of his old profession. But he gets the job done. In case the parallels between the two stories aren't obvious enough, let's do some comparisons. In the show, there is a character who dies in the real world, then wakes up in another. A world that exists beyond reality. A city that exists between worlds. One that looks similar to the real world. The main character, Steven Matrix, dies and then resurrects to become a savior archetype, same as Neo. You can say that that is how the integral anomaly manifests itself in the Matrix. He must die and resurrect to acquire the powers of the One. Steven Matrix also discovers that he is able to return to his world and help the people, just like the Red Pills. And let's not forget the existence of angels and demons. According to the architect, the first version of the Matrix was a paradise. The second version, however, was more akin to a nightmare. A hell where demons, monsters, and other mythological creatures existed. The fact that this Matrix TV show showed a hell with mythological creatures, as well as a nightmarish reality, the similarities between it and the Nightmare Matrix are undeniable. Now you might be thinking that this is just a coincidence. There are plenty of other shows with angels, demons, heaven, and hell. There is no proof that this show and the Matrix movies are connected. Oh, but there is more. In the marketing material of the show, the narrator mentions that Steven Matrix was an agent of death, a hitman, but now he must become a force for good. This coincides with Morpheus' description of the agents. Inside the Matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. Before Neo was disconnected from the Matrix, he was also susceptible to the agents. Maybe at one point, Morpheus saw Neo as a potential enemy, but once he was awakened, Neo became the hero of humanity. Going back to the show, Steven Matrix eliminated his enemies using fire weapons. Nothing supernatural per se. You might think that this is rather boring. There's nothing comparable there because Neo doesn't use guns. His entire body is his weapon. But Steven Matrix was able to kill his enemies because they were half demons and half something else. According to the promotional material, this reminds us of something that happened in Matrix Reloaded, when Persephone betrayed her husband, the Merovingian. K-9 
Cain and Abel were programs from an older version of the Matrix. They were werewolf programs that caused more problems than they were worth, according to the wife. But they were hard to kill, which is why the Merovingian kept them around. Neo may not have been able to kill the brothers, even with his powers, but Persephone knew the solution to the problem. Silver bullets. She shot dead one of the brothers in the head, proving that a gun can be an effective weapon against a monster if you have the right ammunition. This is how Steven Matrix is able to destroy the monsters, but we left the best for last. The biggest coincidence of the Matrix. Trinity is one of the most iconic characters in the Matrix franchise. Of course, we all know that. We've discussed the possibility that she might be a human program hybrid created and used by the machines. Her purpose is to find the anomaly. This would explain why Trinity is back in Matrix 4. She is a constant in each simulation. So what does she have to do with the Matrix show 93? Well, one of the main characters of the series was a woman named Liz Teal, played by Carrie Ann Moss. Surprised? Carrie Ann Moss was one of the cast members of a show called Matrix years before appearing in a little film of the same name. A show that presented a nightmarish reality where a man had to save humanity, like he was some kind of chosen one. The 1993 Matrix show could be the emergence of the first integral anomaly, a man who died and comes back to life, trapped between the nightmare and the real world. Steven Matrix stops being an agent of death and becomes a savior who is guided by other programs to help him fulfill his purpose, redeeming himself from his past mistakes and meets characters like Liz Teal, the first version of Trinity, the first anomaly, the savior, a real nightmarish reality, and Carrie Ann Moss in a series titled Matrix. Yeah, that sure is one hell of a coincidence. Obviously, the creators of the series have no ties with the Wachowskis or Warner Brothers. This is a simple little fan theory to let our imaginations run wild. No relation whatsoever. Although, when you see the images of the 1993 Matrix show, you can't help but see the similarities with the Nightmare Matrix simulation. But do you agree? What do you think about this random coincidence of a show titled Matrix from 1993 with actress Carrie Ann Moss? Did you like our theory about this show possibly being the Nightmare Matrix? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.